Hi everyone! This week I'm going to be working on a, an acrylic painting of a lighthouse um, in front of an ocean with a sky view, so a little bit of a seascape I guess. And I'm going to do so using a method I've used in the past where I make a drawing on some parchment paper and then using some hot glue I trace over my drawing with the glue creating a sort of stencil for my painting. And then I'm going to use some texture paste to cover my whole entire canvas and I'm going to place the stencil on the canvas um, to add the image there instead of having to like sort of carve it into my texture paste. For this process I'm going to use a product called Light Modeling Paste. And I like to use this paste because it's a lot lighter than some of the texture pastes you can find on the market. And this is a relatively big canvas, so I wanna make sure that it doesn't make uh, the final product too heavy. I'm using a palette knife to apply my modeling paste on the canvas. And I'm trying not to make the, the uh, layer too thick, but I do want it to have some texture, so I'm gonna put a fair amount. And once I'm done applying the modeling paste, then I'll be ready to apply my stencil. And I'll use the variety of different other products, um, some maybe some collage elements, and different tools to create more textures in the surface. One thing I have mentioned in the past when I've done similar types of paintings is that you don't necessarily need to go out and buy modeling paste for these types of product projects. You could just go to your local uh, Dolby supply store and buy other products. Um, for instance, you could buy joint compound, um, plaster of Paris is also another thing that you can buy and they may be less expensive than buying a jug um, or a container of this product. This is a gallon's worth of the product but this is something I use fairly frequently so that's why I keep it on hand but if you are just trying to create you know, one little painting for your home and you don't intend on making lots of these paintings and you may not want to have a lot of them on hand, you can of course buy smaller quantities of the product but it may still be more expensive than just going to your local building supply store and buying a joint compound or a plaster of Paris or, or something of the like. So you just want to have something that's relatively thick so that you can create textures in your canvas. Now that I've finished applying the, com the uh, modeling paste on the surface of the canvas, I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to remove it from the parchment paper and I'll place it on top of the modeling paste. Here's my stencil. It's kind of neat because it stays pretty much in one piece. And I believe, yeah, so I'm gonna lay this down here. And I'm gonna use the blunt end of a wooden skewer to press it down into the compound. So I have a bowl here of different products, different like papers, tissue paper, some grocery bag paper um, that I put some white marks on, and I have, this is some packing paper from delivery, and I have some cheesecloth that I've dyed using some uh, tea. Um, so I'm going to use that to put in the on the canvas to help create some textures. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna use yet, I'm just gonna play it by ear and see what I feel like adding. I've decided to use some crumpled up tissue paper to start adding some clouds to my sky. I'm pressing down on the paper to make sure it adheres to the medium, but I don't wanna flatten it completely. Then I've decided to use some uh, recycled packing paper to start adding to the grass area. Using the tip of a wooden skewer, I etch some lines into the top of the tower to create some windows. 
Then again using the wooden skewer, I add some etch marks in the roof to create some tiles. To create some stones in the little cabin and the base of the lighthouse, I flip my wooden skewer around and I use the blunt tip to poke um, the medium. Of course, there wouldn't be a need for a lighthouse if there wasn't an ocean close by. Now I'm using some cheesecloth to add some more texture to the grass area. Again, I'm pressing it in to make sure it adheres to the medium, but I don't want to flatten it completely. I use a palette knife to smooth out some of my surface, and I also use it to start um, pressing on the different collage and elements that I've added to my surface. I want to make sure they are completely adhered to the medium, and it's also important for me to make sure that there are no air bubbles. It's also important for me to do this in the cloud area as well, especially since they are made with tissue paper, and tissue paper is very fragile. Now I take out my wooden skewer again, and I use the tip to start creating some blades of grass. Now oh, I'm feeling pretty satisfied with my textures. Just going to fix a couple of edges quickly. That drying pointy, it'll be uh, very sharp and not great to have <laughs> on your fingers when you're moving your painting. So, yeah, I'm gonna call it done texture wise, and now it just needs to cure. Thank you for making the time to join me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!